Welcome to the final module of Statistical Molecular Thermodynamics. In this module, module 13, we're going to take a look at batteries, electrochemical cells, and electrochemistry in general. So let me begin with the idea of harnessing electrons to do work. And here is an old school experiment. You can tell it's old school because it's in a wooden test tube rack. And if you take a test tube filled with a solution of copper sulfate, and copper sulfate is a deep blue crystalline salt. When you dissolve it in water, you get a pretty blue solution, aqueous solution. But if you place a zinc rod, so we see here a rod in that test tube, so zinc is sort of a silvery metal, what one discovers is that the blue color of the solution over time disappears and copper metal plates out from the solution onto the surface of the zinc rod. And so you actually see that in this picture here. You can see the sort of orangish brown copper uh, covering what used to be a silvery surface. And the zinc rod decomposes in that process. And so in electrochemical language, we would actually call that a short circuit. And the reason it's a short circuit is you have directly in contact two things that want to transfer electrons one to another. And because they're in contact, the circuit is, is very, very short. They're in contact. And you'll maybe remember from our discussion of free energy, one of the definitions of the free energy is that it is the maximum extractable non-PV work. So all the work that could be done that is unrelated to pressure volume changes. So given a large change in free energy, we might like to indeed harness that in order to do some kind of work. And so here is the way that we would do that from an electrochemical standpoint by separating the reacting components into what are known as half cells. And so what's shown here is an electrochemical cell, and there's a lot of detail here, but let's start at the left. And at the left we have a zinc rod. That rod is called the anode. And it is in contact with an aqueous solution in which zinc sulfate is dissolved. So if you like, the zinc rod is zinc metal, it's zinc zero, and the zinc sulfate has zinc ions, zinc two plus. And so if I take electrons away from the zinc, if I oxidize zinc, in order to generate zinc two plus ions, which then dissolve into solution, I can flow those electrons through some sort of a wire to the copper rod in the other half cell, and the copper is in a solution of copper sulfate, so the copper two ions in solution can now have these electrons delivered to them through the copper rod. They go from being copper two plus, they are reduced by the electrons to being solid copper, and the electrons moving through that circuit, if negative charge moves this way, unfortunately physicists once upon a time defined current as being the movement of positive charge. So a physicist thinks about holes, which are positive charges, moving in the opposite direction to electrons, and that defines current. But in any case, we can harvest the work associated with those electrons going downhill in free energy. And the last thing we need to do is, you're not allowed to change overall charge neutrality. So in order to allow electrons to leave this half cell and appear in this half cell, we have to balance that by charges moving between the two cells, in this case through something called a salt bridge. And so usually that's a, a tube, for instance, filled with some fairly viscous material. Agar is one example. So that's uh, used in growing bacteria on plates. Perhaps you've uh, encountered that in a biology laboratory, for instance. But in any case, that permits ions to flow in either direction. So either sulfate or zinc, although that would ultimately, uh, again, potentially mix your cells, you'd like to have non-reactive ions flowing, but that permits charge to end up being neutralized. So this is overall an electrochemical cell in which we can use the movement of the electrons in order to do work. All right, and so as I've emphasized on the left-hand side here, we have oxidation occurring at the anode, and on the right-hand side we have reduction occurring at the cathode, and the salt bridge maintains charge neutrality. So let's look at a few different kinds of electrodes, and in particular kinds of half cells. And so we've already looked at uh, this one, where we have an aqueous ion, which can be reduced 
to a metal, so solid metal in contact with aqueous ions. There are other examples of half cells that are quite common. One is a pure metal that's in contact with aqueous ions or an insoluble salt. And so here we have silver chloride, which is insoluble in water. And when it is reduced, it generates the pure metal silver, also insoluble in water, it's a metal, but puts chloride anion into the solution. And another uh, possibility would be mercury sulfate. So again, an insoluble solid. In this case, it's reduced by two electrons to make pure mercury liquid and to liberate sulfate anions into solution. We can also have so-called gas electrodes. And in a gas electrode, there is an interaction of a gas with some sort of a solid surface, catalyst we would call it, that permits in the case of hydrogen, for example, the reduction of protons gives rise to hydrogen gas. And in the case of uh, the chlorine electrode, we can have chlorine gas interacting with a catalyst being reduced by electrons in order to make the chloride anion. And last of all, we can have a reduction taking place altogether in solution between different oxidation states of metals. So here are two examples, thallium and iron being reduced from their three plus oxidation states. In the case of thallium by two electrons to a one plus oxidation state. In the case of iron by a single electron to a two plus oxidation state. All of those will have some sort of free energy associated with them and we'll see how to work with that in just a moment. So our convention is that we always write these so-called half cell reactions. Half cell because they include an electron as an actual reactant. And uh, by convention we always put the electron on the left hand side, that is we are always reducing something in order to make a reduced product. Now in a complete circuit where there's also something except uh, to donate the electron, that is something being oxidized, that would involve writing one of these equations backwards in order to ultimately cha balance charge. But when we just talk about a half cell, by convention it's always written in reduction mode. But now let's, let's take a look at a full electrochemical cell. And there is a shorthand convention for writing them, and I've shown that here for the very first one we considered. And the convention is that you put the anode at which point oxidation is taking place to the left. And so our anode was solid zinc in contact with a zinc sulfate solution. The cathode is written to the right. The cathode is where the electrons are being delivered to. And so reduction is taking place and it was copper sulfate in solution in contact with copper solid. One puts a single bar between the individual couples in the half cell. And finally, if there is a salt bridge, one indicates that with a double bar in the center. And, and now a handy mnemonic if you'd like it, because sometimes it's a little tricky to remember these things. First off, notice that anode and oxidation both start with vowels, and cathode and reduction both start with consonants. So that's an easy way to remember what's happening at each of the two electrodes. And in terms of actually writing the full electrochemical cell, note that A comes before C in the alphabet, and O comes before R in the alphabet. So it's written in alphabetical order if you want to think of it that way. So metal oxidized to metal ion in solution in the case of the anode here. Metal ion reduced goes to metal in solid state in the case of the cathode. And some wire connecting the two half cells lets the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. The salt bridge maintains the charge neutrality and through a corresponding flow of ions, whether they be positive or negative. It just depends which direction they flow, it'll maintain neutrality. So another example, just to, to put one here, is cadmium, solid cadmium, in contact with cadmium sulfate solution, and the other half cell, mercury sulfate, in contact with liquid mercury. And what I'd like you to notice here is there is not a salt bridge involved here, and the reason is that there's no chance of a short circuit appearing, and that is because over on the right hand side here are two pure phases that are not mobile in an electrolyte solution. This is mercuric sulfate as a solid in contact with mercury liquid. It's just maybe sitting at the bottom of some little tube holding it. The solution over the top permits the cadmium sulfate to be floating around, but that's neither here nor there. That will not lead to uh, a 
a short circuit of any kind. And so electrons flow from the anode to the cathode as usual. And I'll just mention one more time that although as a chemist I like to think of electrons moving, these fundamental particles, physicists like to think about holes moving. Those are positive charges that are like virtual things, a, a lack of electron is a way to think about it. Um, and current flows in the direction of positive charge. All right, here is a chance now that we've kind of defined all the various components. Here is one of those do-it-yourself at home uh, electrochemical cells that one can build. One can stab into a lemon, a galvanized nail, which is like zinc and a copper tube and connect them up to a multimeter. And so your challenge here is to name the parts of this system. And here you have the answers, nothing too complicated. Uh, the zinc continues to be the anode. The copper tube is the cathode. It is actually not reducing copper sulfate to copper. There's no copper sulfate in a lemon. It's actually reducing the protons, which are there because a, a lemon is very acidic, reducing them to hydrogen gas. So that's kind of an interesting reaction. The lemon itself is serving as a salt bridge or an electrolyte solution would, would perhaps be the best way to think about it. But I, I put salt bridge down on this slide. All right, that uh, kind of completes our definitional tour through electrochemical cells. Next, what I want to talk about is potential and electromotive force.